Correct. But, you know, you do see that you're going to be done through. The Spirit's going to use the body and going to use the world and the symbols of the world in, in a very expressive function that's part of extending. And then at some point when you really get rinsed with that, then you start to become totally disidentified with the doer. So there's no difference between when you seem to be doing something and not doing something. It all kind of just merges together. Your whole perception merges together into a unified perception and the doer is gone. So you have a still mind, you're left with a still mind and it's totally irrelevant whether the body is active or inactive. You don't have to be in lotus positions and breathing just a certain way and doing all these techniques. You know, you're totally released. You're the dreamer of the dream. You don't need to be concerned about rituals or postures or all those little techniques anymore because you're back, back much further in the mind. Yeah, and what I'm hearing with your sharing, I feel it's it's a call to step into your inspiration, really find what is your passion, what is your heart calling you to, and to really step into that. And that's the way the spirit works. It will just give you something that you know you feel passionate about or that is attractive to you and to call you in it so that you can really let go of those blocks and open your heart. And that's what it is. It's uh, always teaching, the Spirit is always teaching through attraction and bringing you deeper and deeper using the symbols, all the symbols. So it's never about pushing anything away. It's not you need, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, because then you will experience truth. No, allow the path that the Spirit has for you, allow the use of those symbols, allow the use of um, your inspiration or your passion or the things that you feel really good about, and allow them to be used in a very uh, helpful way to bring you deeper and deeper in the awareness of who you are. And that is very gentle, and that is how the, the path of the spirit is. So would you say then that um, during the period of boredom of lethargy, begin to, by asking the Holy Spirit to bring what you just said about? Yeah. Or help bring it about? Yeah, even just what do you want me to do? Like really being in constant communication with the Spirit. For me, prayer is not an activity. It's a constant uh, state of mind of openness to the Spirit. Because the Spirit is really talking to us all the time. We're always in contact with Him, except when we close, we shut ourselves off from Him. And so keeping your mind open and you know, asking for guidance to the Spirit for me is just a way to open up the channel so that you can be in communication with the Spirit. It's about joining in the present moment with the Spirit. And then the form will be used in order to keep you in this awareness of the Spirit. And so, for example, in the community, everything we do, we use so many projects, so many artistic activities, only for one thing. We have absolutely no future goal about it or no outcome. We, we use them for one thing, is to focus our attention on the presence, on the spirit, and to really be in connection with them all the time. And in that, just everything else falls away, because the, your devotion to the presence is what makes you experience what the presence is about, what your true nature is about. And so, that's how you can truly come in touch with that in a deeper way than just sitting in, in your chair and, you know, just, okay, I'm not going to do anything because... I, I'm just letting go of the whole world. It, might, it will work, but it might take far much more time. And it can be very joyful. So I feel like that's really, you know, just stepping into your joy and stepping into fully living your life by just allowing that is just a great, really a great thing to do. It's huge to, to live, give yourself allowance and permission to live by inspiration instead of fear of consequences. And, and those Course in Miracles workbook lessons are designed to take you right into the heart of the inspiration. Of what you used, Lesson 50, I think of Lesson 50, I am sustained by the love of God. He gets so specific there. You believe you're sustained by everything but the love of God, and it's like, okay, here we go, give it to me straight. Pills, money, protected clothing, being liked, knowing the right people, an endless list of nothing that you endow with, with magical, meaning, powers. magical powers. So, 
Then you get to Lesson 76, I'm under no laws but God's, the laws of economics, you know, the laws of medicine, you know, the laws of friendship. Oh, come on. Come on. You mean the laws of friendship or ego? I thought we are supposed to be friendly. And now you're saying the laws of friendship. Well, the laws of reciprocity. You know, the, the laws that what's a good friend, what a good friend should do, and how a good friend should act. You know, it's all past associations. The ego has invented friendship even. Even friendship? Oh, come on. I can see economics. You know, Marxism and capitalism, you know, I can see that only, but friendship. You see, he's being very specific and he's saying, no, the ego even invented its own laws of friendships. And you know that the ego invented it because you can turn from happy to angry with some really close friends. I can't believe a friend would never treat me that way. Ha uh ha! -huh. We have stumbled upon the laws of friendship and they're made by the ego, not by God. And yet, when we forgive, when we, when we follow the miracle, we actually become very friendly. But we're not bound by roles and expectations of, of the govern that friendliness. It's just friendliness of the moment, friendliness of being spontaneously sourced by your Creator and experiencing miracles. And that's why when people say, oh David, you're very kind, you're very friendly. I've got a one-on-one -on -one schedule for Sacramento and I, I look back at the reference of the, as a woman had written me before, she said, the question she wrote to me before was, are spiritual teachers ever mean? <laughs> this is the kind of questions I get. She said, I have a spiritual teacher and sometimes he's just mean. And uh, can that be from the Spirit? Can the Spirit be mean? And she said, I think sometimes he's really hard on me. And I said, well, it's, I said, she said to me, you know, have you ever been mean? You know, that's the kind of stuff. <laughs> and I said, well, the Spirit can come through you because the Spirit is so uncompromising. Let your yay be yay, let your nay be nay. There's not going to be a wiggle room with the Holy Spirit. It's going to come through very clearly and directly. In, uh, in fact, Kathy was introducing me saying, and I said, in an authoritative voice, not authoritarian, Authoritarian is like a, a higher, lower, superior, inferior. Authoritative is with certainty, with clarity, crispness. Let your yay be yay, let your nay be nay. And the ego at times will react to that too. If it wants the nay to be a yay, it'll say, that's mean. You know? But actually, when we're really clear, there's actually a gentleness and a friendliness that comes, even with the authoritative words. There's a friendliness, there's a kindness, there's a sweetness behind it that you can really feel because there's a non-investment in outcome. <coughs> we were talking a little bit about that today because Armel so often has the, the guy just rips through, rips through, rips through, rips through, rips through and pours through and then oftentimes there'll be other people that will kind of <coughs> avoid, delay, not follow the guidance and then Sometimes she'll just smile and she'll say, I told you. <laughs> that one came out of the time. Where you found yourself repeatedly offering the guidance of the Spirit, which then is avoided, denied, delayed, da 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 da. And then she watches it play out for five days or five minutes or whatever, and then goes, I told you. But it's very soft, you see. It's just a soft, like, the Spirit is guiding us to help us. It's offering us wisdom to help us, to save time. He's not trying to delay. See, so here to save time. So that's good. It's a good thing.